Welcome to the Effortless English Show with the world's number one English teacher, AJ Hoag, where AJ's more than 40 million students worldwide finally learn English once and for all without the boring textbooks, classrooms, and grammar drills. Here's AJ with a quick piece to help you learn to speak fluent English effortlessly. Hi, I'm AJ Hoag, the author of Effortless English. Learn to speak English like a native father of the Effortless English system. I train you. You speak English fluently. You speak English powerfully. You speak English confidently. You speak English effortlessly. When you, you join my VIP program, go to EffortlessEnglishClub.com and join my VIP program. Commit, don't quit. VIP members, as I said, you're getting that free movie course very soon. Just need a, I don't know, a week or so to get the, get it online and ready to go. But it's 90% finished and ready. So VIP members, yes, you get that. The, the Matrix movie course. Everybody else, my business English course, I'll be sending out the special discount code for the new year for all of you who are on my email list. It will go out on my email list. I recommend you join my email list. It's free, effortlessenglishclub.com. Go to the bottom, enter your email. Very simple. I'll send that out in a couple more days. What's today? Tuesday? Yeah, today's Tuesday in Japan, so probably two days from now, I'll send out the information about the business English course. So join that email list right now. Today we're going to talk about traditions, and once again, our topic comes from one of our members on Gab. Gab is the place to be. That's my social media. I don't do Twitter. Twitter's dead. Twitter is dead. Forget Twitter. Leave Twitter. Buy Twitter. Gone. I'm done with Twitter. Facebook is dead. Goodbye, Facebook. I do nothing on Facebook, really. I post a link to the new show. That's all. I don't answer comments or questions on Facebook. Uh, I don't use it for my personal life, really. So I have one social media. I don't answer comments on YouTube. I turn them off now. I don't want to deal with it. Too much nonsense. There's only one place that I read your comments, and that is on Gab. So Gab is the place if you want to connect with me on social media. Gab is the place when you want to connect with other Effortless English members when we start our speaking challenge, you want to join a speaking group, practice your speaking, Gab is the place to meet people. Get on Gab, gab.com, free. It's the best social media now. Merry Christmas to Russia, yes, indeed. January 7th to not just Russia, but to all of the uh, Orthodox Christians, Merry Christmas. In fact, that is our topic today. <laughs> our topic is about traditions, traditions. And first we're going to, I'm going to read a post from Slavika. She wrote a very nice long post about the Christmas traditions of her country and her family. And she's a, she's an Orthodox Christian, Orthodox Christianity, primarily in the East. Orthodox Christianity grew out of the Eastern Roman Empire, what we call the Byzantine Empire, right? The empire split in half, right? The Roman Empire, there was a Western and an Eastern. The Roman Empire became Christian, and the, in the Western Empire of, of Rome, you know, eventually became what are, what are now called Catholics, right? With the Pope centered in Rome. That's why it that's why the Vatican is in Rome. But in the East, they had, you know, their own Christian traditions, which now are called Orthodox. And, you know, there's a Russian Orthodox Church. There's, you know, a Greek Orthodox Church, etc. And in Orthodox Christianity, they celebrate the, the main Christmas Day on today, January 7th. And, of course, they have actually many days. It's a big... There's a whole tradition, lots of traditions. Each country has different traditions, too. Of course, we're going to read about Slavika's tradition, and then we'll talk more generally about traditions and why traditions are important, why we should look to the past and create or borrow or use 
traditions from our past. Why they're important, why they are powerful. All right, let's, uh, let's go ahead and go. I'm going to share my screen. If you're watching on video, go to, you can see my Gab account. There we go. Okay, so Slavika. I'm going to read this. Well, I'll, I'll kind of gonna read a, a little part and then talk about it, read a little and talk about it. Here we go. Okay, so she says, Hello, hello AJ, and my dear friends. About the celebration of Orthodox Christmas 100 years ago. So it's kind of, it's, she's talking about a tradition that's at least 100 years old. You know, that comes from her grandparents, that she knows from her grandparents. I heard about it from both my grandmothers. Okay, the first part of the tradition, fasting. Hey, hey, fasting. I told you that Christians fasted. Fasting for six weeks before Christmas. And I, there's still a decent amount of fasting in, uh, I think, especially in the Orthodox uh, church churches. So they would fast for six weeks. And they, what kind of fasting did they do? They avoided uh, first the first week it was only water. Nice. I like it. During the fasting, then during the fasting, they would do after that two to three meals are taken, but only small amounts of vegetables and fruits. So basically a vegetarian, vegetarian, no meat, no meat. So kind of a vegetarian diet then for the next five weeks. Only on Sunday can they have fish. Okay, they have a fish on Sundays, but no other meat. So no meat the whole six weeks. If someone was pregnant or very old, then they might change the fast and then maybe they would have some meat or broth or something uh, if they needed it for their health. So they didn't, they weren't extreme. If someone needed, uh, uh, if someone had a health, health problem, then they would, uh, they could modify it. Okay, number two, the other next part of the tradition, I think a very important part, evil thoughts and deeds are forbidden. Of course, they're always forbidden, but more attention is paid during this time. So they would make this time the six weeks. So the Christmas celebration was six weeks long. Right? So you know, going until January 7th, so starting like end of November, right? And during this time, kindness and assistance to family and community is a must. All right, so they especially focus on kindness and generosity, helping their family and their community. Not just anybody, not strangers, right? Not get just giving money to some big organization. You don't know what they're doing with the money. No, your family and your community. They would be generous and kind, especially extra generous, extra kind, extra help, to family and community during this time. It was called Sabernost, or in English, conscience, conscience, consciousness, conscience, good, I can't say it. Conscience, consciousness, 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 conscientious. Yeah. Blech. See, I have trouble saying words too sometimes. <laughs> family is most important during this time. Of course, the day before Christmas is called Christmas Eve. Early in the morning, before dawn, before the sun comes up, the men go into the woods, into the forest, and bring back a branch of oak called bad, badniak, or jolly follow in English. They would bring this back into the house, and they would burn it in the oven for a while. So it probably create a nice, very nice smell, right? Uh, this this uh little branch or little piece of oak and they would burn it and on Christmas Eve create this nice smell and they would go out into the woods and find it that's kind of that's very nice I like that I might try oh, I, might, I might use that one <laughs> uh, of course she says this custom has nothing to do with Christianity it's taken from the tradition of the old Slavic people right from from before Christianity and you find this in many countries where you have very old cultural traditions, right, that are very, very old, and then maybe a newer religion like Christianity comes, and they combine the two. Very common. 
right? And she says, most of the customs in Orthodox Christianity were taken from the tradition of the old Slav people, right? On Christmas Day, then on Christmas Day, I like this. This is a nice tradition. They make handmade bread early in the morning. That's nice. Handmade bread in the morning. Uh, you know, with and then with the bread they add corn or wheat or hazelnuts, walnuts. They put in the bread. It's kind of a special bread. And then the bread is broken by all family members. Broken means, you know, like they share the bread with all the family. And everyone gets a piece of bread. Nice. That's nice, too. They all share the bread together. And then finally, on Christmas Day, the fast is broken. They break their fast and they eat meat. So after six weeks, they finally eat meat on Christmas Day. And their tradition, the tradition is they eat dried meat, beef, pork, whatever, from the supplies the family had for the winter. So this makes sense, right? Especially in the past. They didn't have, um, you know, modern technology. So they had to dry out the meat and save it, right? So it wouldn't get spoiled. Quite nice. More recently, they have, she said, they kind of spoil that habit and they have a huge amount of food. Okay, yeah, so they've adapted it more to modern uh, yeah, consciousness, I can say. It's conscientious, conscientious. Conscientious is the word I was trying to say. <laughs> conscientious, which means you care about other people. You care about how they feel. Conscientious. I don't know why I was having so much problem with it. Conscientious. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, next about gifts. Another next tradition. Gifts are symbolic. And they were, they, they're ones that you can do on their own. So they were, they didn't just buy the gifts. The tradition was not go to a store shopping. They would make the gifts. For example, hand knitted sweaters or gloves or socks, something made of wood, a wooden bell, uh, fruit, or maybe some fruit bowl, a fruit bowl or something like that. So there was more thought, right? More effort because they actually would make some nice little gift for, their family. Also nice. I like it. The family is home all day on Christmas Day. The extended family, right? So grandparents, uncles, aunts, cousins, everybody. No guests that day. So it means nobody from outside the family. No friends, nobody outside the family. Only family. We have not changed anything in my family in the celebration of Christmas. We celebrate the same as 100 years ago. The men brought the Christmas Eve, right, the, the, the oak, this morning. Tomorrow morning, I will make handmade bread with the gifts, the presents. We say to each other, peace of God, Christ is born. We pray for friends and all good people. We even pray for evil people, that God will show them the right path. This is the old tradition in my country of Serbia. My family and I don't want to change anything. Our ancestors were wiser than we are. Yes, they were. <laughs> and stronger, too. Mine also. And she says, my friends, I wish you health, happiness, love, and a wonderful family. We should all share our old traditions here. That would be beautiful. I agree. That would be fantastic. I love it. Can you see how there's so much more meaning and, and feeling and, and how these traditions are so much deeper compared to the modern uh, Christmas that we get in the media, right? So the modern American Christmas, because it's essentially American now, the modern American traditions of Christmas are created by the media. We're created by the media. You know, Santa Claus with the big fat red suit, that came from Coca-Cola, guys. Do some research about it. That's a Coca-Cola advertising campaign. There's nothing traditional about that. St. Nicholas was not a fat guy in a red suit. You know, I'll, I, I might do a show about St. Nicholas just so we learn a who, who was St. Nicholas really. He was a saint, first of all, right? He didn't, he didn't have elves, he didn't live in the North Pole, and none of that, <laughs> okay? 
<laughs> that's all from media and advertising and marketing campaigns and uh, created by mostly non-Christians, by the way. So it's nonsense, like most modern things where they the the old traditions have a deeper meaning and, and uh, purpose, but the new stuff from the media is just garbage, mostly. I know it's kind of fun. Look, I did it. And I had fun in, as a kid. But what Slavika is talking about, these traditions, although simpler, are more powerful, have a deeper meaning, more feeling, create a better connection in the family. And so, you know, the general topic of today is that I encourage you to find the old traditions of your culture, your religion, your country, your people, and uh, go back to them. You know, bring them back alive. Some of them have been lost. I know, right? In all different cultures. Many of them have been lost and replaced with these modern, you know, marketing kind of traditions. But let's go back. You know, for example, I'll just say in my own family, with my own children, I plan to do, to, I, I'm, I'm researching and doing my best to find uh, and research many of these old Christmas traditions. Christmas is uh, certainly a, a, an important, uh, at the very least, cultural holiday for me as a, being an American. Um, but I want to go back. So number one, I'm researching some of the old uh, American traditions of Christmas, the old ones. And really, the old traditions in America, they, they go, they're before America, right? United States of America. That's, you know, the whole country. But really, a lot of these traditions go back to the individual colonies, the individual states. You know, they were independent, semi-independent um, at the time, like Virginia, uh, Georgia, you know, New York. These were, they were colonies under the British, but they were largely independent. They were not one country. And in fact, the traditions in each colony were very different. So for example, in Massachusetts, one of the original colonies, uh, they had, they did almost nothing on Christmas. They were Purit, what were called Puritans. They, uh, not very fun people. <laughs> um, so they, they didn't like any of these traditions because they said, oh, they're not, they're not, they're not Christian, you know, so they, wouldn't do any of that stuff. Uh, but then in Virginia, I'm more, I'm a Southerner, so I, 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 I'm more attracted to the Southern uh, traditions that uh, they did a lot of great things. Like they had the feasts and a lot of kind of some similarities to what Slavika talked about. But I also, in, something you can do also is you can also even find traditions from other cultures that you feel are beautiful or meaningful and you can use them in your own family. Why not? Like, I like some of these traditions that Slavika talks about. I might use some of those with my own children in, my, in our family. Maybe they will become part of our family's traditions, even though I'm not Serbian and, and my family's not Serbian, but so what? You know, I, 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 I love the bread making, for example. That's wonderful. We could all make bread together on Christmas morning. It would be fantastic. That would be fun. Now, I'm, at the moment, I live in a city, so I may not, maybe I can't go into the woods and find some oak, but we'll see. We might move out to the country more. We're thinking about it so that even something like that would be nice. Uh, my family, going back even before America, was Scottish and uh, Scottish, German, and Danish, kind of those Northern European. So there are a lot of good, great, beautiful old traditions that come from those countries. Uh, for Christmas and other times of year also. So I encourage you to do this. Uh, you know, for example, if you're Muslim, then research the, the old traditions of Ramadan. I know that some of you have said that uh, in Ramadan, some people is just, you know, ah, they eat like crazy. They kind of go crazy, right? And they maybe they've lost a bit of the feeling of it, the deeper traditions. Uh, and so again, research that. And not only religion, right? There are many traditions we have in our old traditions that are more cultural, right? More cultural, connected to our people, connected to our history, that are not uh, religious. Like, I know American 
example would be the 4th of July, Independence Day, uh, you know, celebrating the d victory against the, uh, the British. And so there are some nice traditions there. Again, uh, we, I can research the older traditions. Now, most of them are lost. Now it's just they have some fireworks and nobody really even thinks about the reason for the holiday, right? Again, the, the modern media has destroyed a lot of the, the more beautiful and old traditions that really gave a, a, a stronger feeling and purpose. So I'm going to research some of the old ways. How did they celebrate Independence Day, I don't know, 150 years ago, back in 1820, <laughs> right? Shortly after independence. They could still remember the British at that point. So I imagine they, uh, they had a lot uh, quite different traditions and it was probably a little more powerful. And more meaningful. And the reason these are powerful is that it, it, they do create, they help to bring your family together or bring your community together, right? They create stronger connections because they, they're more pure, more simple, more meaningful, right? As I've said many times, so, so you can see with um, the tradition Slavika described how there are, you know, they're doing these doing so many of these things together. So it's bringing the family together, even fasting, right? They're fasting and, and, and they are focused on being more generous and kind to their family, right? That's, that's not just buying stuff. In America, you know, like I said, many uh, people in America, my family, uh, they just, they get stressed at Christmas time. There's, it's the complete opposite of what it should be. Right? It should be a time of being generous and kind and closer to family. It should be a very warm and wonderful time. Instead, they're stressed out. Why? They feel, oh, I, I must buy a lot of gifts. I've got to go shopping. Oh, and the shopping, the mall is very busy. And oh, what do I get everybody? It's terrible. It's terrible. So instead of buying all these stuff, make bread together in the morning. Get the whole family, the kids can help, everybody can help. You all come together, you make bread together, and then you eat it together. It's so simple, doesn't cost much money, brings you all together and has a deeper meaning, a deeper feeling, right? Without all the stress, without spending all this stuff. You don't need to do all that. So anyway, I recommend you do that. I will be doing that with my own family, you know, because, because modern America has lost so many I'd say almost all of our traditions, really, the deeper ones, they, they've been destroyed by marketing and media. And most people have, there's no feeling anymore. There's no idea of any purpose at all. There's no meaning. Christmas is just shopping and buying stuff. Easter, just eat some candy. Halloween, put on a mask and walk around and get candy. Fourth of July, some fireworks. I mean, that's all. I mean, nobody thinks there's nothing deeper. It doesn't, and for that reason, these traditions, these holidays now, they don't really make families stronger anymore. They don't bring much happiness anymore. Uh, but that's because we lost the old ways. So look to the old ways. Look to the old ways. You can start with your own nation and your own culture and your own religion. Of course, start first there and the old ways of your country, of your nation, of your religion. And then you can also borrow from others. If you like some others, you can borrow from them also. I'm going to borrow some from Orthodox Christianity. Definitely I will. I like them. I think there's, there's a little more meaning there and therefore more power. So for sure, I'll borrow those. Uh, you know, my wife's Japanese will definitely be doing a lot of Japanese traditions uh, and again, trying to find the older ones, the more meaningful ones. I will be researching old American traditions. You know, what did they used to be before all this media marketing stuff? And I will be looking at like my family history. Like I said, my family history is uh, goes back like my father's family goes back. It's Scottish. So we'll be looking at some of the old Scottish traditions. Why not? My mother's family, uh, mostly German. And then there's uh, my dad's, some of my dad's family also has some uh, Danish. So I'll be looking at some of those as well. Why not? Why not? The, the, you can create these in your own family then, right? You can 
you don't have you can ignore the media culture you can ignore what everybody else is doing if they if if you don't like it if if you feel like the it's it's there's no goodness there no purpose no truth and you can create your own and you don't have to just create your own randomly though uh, you should try to connect to your ancestors there's more meaning when you connect to the old ways connect to your ancestors so anyway we can i, I agree with savika I encourage you all to share your traditions on Gab. Do it on Gab and I'll and I'll I'll repost it. I'll send it out to everybody else. So what are your traditions? They, they can be religious or just cultural, not religious. It doesn't matter or both. Uh, so uh, you know, share the ones that are most powerful for you, most powerful for your family. What are the traditions from your culture that you love the most that you feel are most the most powerful have the most meaning so please share those on gab and we'll we'll all uh discuss them together i think it'd be great all right yeah erdem says hello to everyone from byzantine right <laughs> now what what used to be the you know the byzantine empire the eastern roman empire um now the area now is is uh greece and uh, turkey primarily right those that was this that's where the eastern roman empire was centered and it lasted far longer than the western right rome in the west fell the roman west empire fell uh but the eastern empire continued for like another thousand years a thousand more years the eastern empire continued you, know, you go to istanbul in istanbul like they're one of my favorite things in istanbul there are these uh they're called cisterns, these underwater, uh, where they keep, I mean, underwater, underground, underground water tanks, water storage built by the Romans, the, the Eastern Romans, the Byzantines. So they would keep a water supply under the ground and it's built out of stone. It's really cool, really interesting. Uh, it's, in, it's in the center of Istanbul, really nice. Uh, and you can see a few other Roman... Uh, Byzantine ruins there, of course, Greece um, as well. All right, let me go to our comments and questions now. Yes, Vladislav says, today we celebrate Christmas in Russia. So again, uh, Merry Christmas to... Russians and Serbs and Greeks, etc. Right? All Orthodox Christians. Right. Scott Anderson says, Gab is the place. Indeed it is. Gab's the place to be, guys. Get on Gab. Get on Gab. Get on Gab. Facebook's dying. Twitter's dead. Hmm. Yeah, okay, Prince, exact. yes, India is one of the traditional and heritage countries of the world. Absolutely, India is. Teaches us great cultural values. Yes, and like, uh, you know, Indians have what, Dapali, um, was it Raksha Bandhan, uh, many, <laughs> on and on. I, I don't know all of them, but uh, India has a lot of fantastic, very, very old traditions. You know, China does, you know, the if you look, if you go, back china does japan does. i mean all countries do so please share those i'm interested conscientious <laughs> yeah see scott anderson also knows about coca-cola Right. He says, beat me to it. So he, it's the whole Santa Claus thing is Coca-Cola. You know, I, it's still fun, kind of, but it, it's not traditional at all. <laughs> okay, Vladislav says, in Russia, children go to their relatives and sing a Christian song. And for singing the song, they get some money. Yeah, probably like a little coins or something, right? That's nice. 
Yep, so Hela says, Iran is my country. I know Iran has very old traditions, going all the way back to Persia. Yes, Ilana Khan is exactly right about this. Traditions are the foundation of a society. It's easy to divide and control people when traditions are forgotten. Exactly. That's why. We saw this in Brave New World, right? They destroyed all the traditions in Brave New World, including family. And then the people were completely controlled. They want you to forget your past. They want you to forget your ancestors. Yeah, Iba, uh, you know, again, mentioning about St. Nicholas. We do not have, we have neither Santa nor Father Christmas here in the Ukraine. We have had and have St. Nicholas. That's the real person, St. Nicholas. In fact, Christianity came to Kiev because of uh, Volodymyr married the daughter of the Byzantina emperor. Interesting. The, the history of, of Ukraine is quite interesting. And it has a, there's, there's quite a lot of, you know, the Vikings came down there from Sweden, I think. Modern Sweden. Ah, I kind of heard of this. Ajay says, uh, come to India on the 14th of January. You will see the enthusiasm for the celebration of Uttarayan. You won't forget it ever. People go to their terrace and fly kites. Ah, and do many activities. I think I was in India one time. I've been to India three times. I think I one time I visited in kind of the winter. I think I remember. Maybe it was Calcutta. People flying lots of kites. Interesting. Very cool. Oh, Scott Anderson is Scottish also. Australian now, I believe. But <laughs> we still celebrate uh, Hogmanai. This we do get together and wish each other Happy New Year. Great. Yeah, like Sriman says, the ancient scriptures, you know, holy books, holy teachings, are the source of really pure and authentic traditional values and ideals. Yes, absolutely. Sarah says, I really like the old traditions because they're meaningful and powerful. When we were children, we didn't realize that. Yeah, the children don't realize it directly, but they can kind of feel it. Like I said, what, like I can. Uh, so uh, my Christmas, you know, I grew up in a very modern, suburban, American house, you know, kind of typical, uh, which means a lot of the old traditions were gone already. But. Still, for Christmas, what do I remember? I don't really remember any specific gifts. I think I remember getting a bi bicycle once and being very excited. But, um, but I absolutely remember traveling to my mother's family, you know, like an eight-hour drive every year, and spending the time with my uncles and aunts and cousins and grandparents and all of us eating together kind of the traditional Christmas meal. I remember that it was very powerful for me. It was just is my best one of my best memories of my childhood. Uh, that that warmth, the connection with the family. So did I understand it intellectually? No, of course not. But I could feel it, right? And it was different than just getting a lot of stuff. Right. Ah, here's another Scottish tradition. Scott Anderson says, the Scots celebrate in February Robbie Burns and Shrove Tuesday. Robbie Burns. Poet, I believe.
Yo, Iba's doing fasting now. Great. Iba says, uh, I started intermittent fasting. I not only lost weight, but I feel great. Mmm, nice. By the way, Ukraine is connected to Byzantia. And then again, she's kind of mentioning the, the marriage of the... Yeah, very interesting. I'm going to jump down to the bottom here. Yeah, my Mustafa says, uh, after Ramadan becomes... I don't know how to pronounce it. Eid? 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 Uh, it's a festival after a long fast in Ramadan. Right. Then you, you find this in a lot of countries, kind of what... Uh, uh, like Slavika was talking about, where you know there'll be a period of fasting, and then after the fast, there's a celebration and maybe a feast or some kind of celebration after, because the fast can be challenging. After the sunrise, we all go to the mosque and pray together. And the women and men are divided. Yep, very nice, very nice. See, I mean, there, there's, you know, again, it has a deeper meaning. They're praying and they're fasting. It's not just you know, partying. <laughs> Yeah, now here's a very, cleefy has got a nice example of a tradition, a very simple one that's kind of a family tradition or, or cultural that's it's simple but powerful. And he's saying that it's been lost a little bit. So Cleefy says, good morning, coach. Really old, nice traditions uh, have died with the death of our ancestors. We used to gather every Friday as a family to eat a meal. Now it's a long time. Now for a long time, we just see strangers. Right. Now, see, that's what a simple but powerful tradition. Every Friday, you gather with your family. Uh, I'm guessing maybe even your, um, uh, like your extended family, and have a meal. Right. You can this. You can create. You can create these kind of traditions. You just create them yourself. Right. Or bring them back alive. So, if your family has uh, maybe in the past used to do this, and now it's kind of died. It's, you know, maybe your grandparents are gone, and maybe it's not happening anymore. But you could start it again and invite every Friday or every whatever, every Sunday, or every Monday, or whatever it is, invite your family and, and have that tradition. And even within your family, just, you know, like husband, wife and children, you can create some of these traditions, too. Yeah, Aminia says, Iranians have the oldest New Year celebration in the world called Noros. Nor Noros. Cool. Well, the Persian Empire, obviously Persia, is one of the very, very, you know, they're the very, 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 very ancient cultures. Persia, ancient Greece, Rome, Egypt, India, China. Yeah, these, these are very, 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 very old. Yes, yeah, so like Eba's is like, again, this is the problem. So she says children are supposed to, uh, you know, have insight about God being born. Unfortunately, most traditions were destroyed by the communists. Yeah, and they're being co destroyed by the cultural communists now as well. And this is why we got to fight against it. OK, yes, they are doing this or they have done it. In some countries, they did it already. They did it in America already. America is probably worse than many communist countries, I think. Probably far worse. Uh, so what do we do about that? Well, we have we start them again. We research them. We talk to our old family if we can. Or maybe we just have to find other ways to research. And we start them again. We bring them back alive again. That's how we do it. We bring them alive again. Bring these traditions alive again. Yeah, like Sir, uh, here's, uh, Saif talking about musical traditions. Again, extremely old cultures. The music of Iraq is often called Mesopotamian music, right? Which is that general region. It, encom it encompasses the traditional music of the diverse groups in the modern countries um, 
in old countries of Assyria, Assyria, super old, right? Kurdish, Turk, Arabic, right? Persian, that region, right? Oh, so here's another one. Shiram is an Indian tradition. Have you heard of Ekadashi? I have not. It's a practice in India where people devoted to a specific god fast for that day so they can attain the particular god's kingdom. Very nice. I like it. So you can see, you'll find this, that fasting is often a component. Uh, See, this is something, again, we've lost modern day, right? So what you, you find, and again, all of, you know, so many countries and traditions, these old traditions, is that, yes, there would be a feast, right, which is eating a lot, a big meal celebration. Uh, but you find that usually the feast, before the feast, there was a time of fasting, right? Not just eat, eat, eat. Now we, we drop the fasting. Now there's no fasting, right? In America, it's just eat, eat, eat a lot of crappy food, right? At the holidays, people always, you know, say they're gaining weight at the holidays. They make an excuse. Oh, I can't diet uh, because there's so many parties and so much eating, right? But so it's unbalanced. It's unhealthy because they, they got rid of, they forgot about the time of fasting, right? The feasting is, is, there's no problem with feasting and eating a lot and having big meals, but if you only do that, then it's unhealthy. And so they were smarter in the past. And they had this time of very, so of discipline and fasting before. Then they have a feast to celebrate, right? So Christmas time, we saw with Slavika, Ramadan, long fast, then they feast. Right. And then again, this uh, Shiram, same thing. Right. Again and again and again, you'll see this. So I highly recommend adding this to the traditions, bringing that back. Uh, Easter. Right. There used to be their Lent and it would actually be a much more uh, aggressive fasting before, you know, for a period of time. So I think we should need to bring this back. So it's not just eat, 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 eat. Okay, okay, fine, have the party, have the big feast, that's nice. But before that, a time of fasting. Right, like Abdurrahman says, come to Uzbekistan, you can get, uh, and you can't get over the hospitality. We have lots of traditions that have been lasting for centuries, Ramadan, fast and pray for a month. Right. They fast and pray for a month, a whole month of fasting. Slavika, you know, in the uh, Serbian Orthodox Church, six weeks of fasting. Then the feast, <laughs> right? Not just eat like a pig all the time. Ah, Ethiopia. Berhane, Ethiopia is also Orthodox. Uh, this is Berhane from Ethiopia. Our Christmas is tomorrow, January 7th. Merry Christmas to you. Our country, one month fat. See, again, it's similar, right? Orthodox, you find again. I like, I really like the Orthodox traditions, honestly. I like it. Uh, one month of fasting, no meat or milk products. Tomorrow, everybody eats meat. And you'll see different versions, different kinds of fasts. You know, Ramadan's a dry fast during the daylight time. Uh, the Orthodox Church, okay, they're, they're, Fasting from all meat. Uh, you'll find some that are will just do full water fast. Some of the Indian traditions. You know, there's all these different traditions of different kinds of fasts. But the, the idea is that it's a time of of self control. That you limit what you're doing. You focus on God, on appreciation, on meaning, on purpose. Then you feast to celebrate. Okay, Sarah saying. Kurds also. We have a Kurdish people have a celebration in March called Nowruz. Everyone wears Kurdish clothes, even the babies. I like that. See, here in Japan at New Year, they visit shrines, Shinto shrines. And uh, 
especially the children, they dress them in the old like kimonos, beautiful, or, or sometimes modern kimonos, but they're but very, very, very super colorful, really bright. We have, uh, we actually live near one of the most famous shrines in Osaka. So the last week, the whole week of the first week of January, we've had huge numbers of people, right? That is like a huge traffic, tons of people visiting our shrine, our local shrine, and they bring their children there, a blessing for the new year. It's really great. And it's really pretty because I'm walking around, I get to see all these you know, kind of nice kimonos. Everybody's dressed very nicely. Right. It's great. These are these are wonderful. And they go as a family. The whole family goes together. Michael Ning's a Yankees fan. What? Ah, here we go. RD. There's a tradition in Nepal called Chat, which is a 36 hour dry fast for the sun like God of energy. It's 36 hour dry fast. There you go. I like it. I like these fasting traditions very much. Very cool. All right, I think it's about time to go. I'll read a couple now, just off topic, I guess. Looks like we got all the topic. The tr people talking about the commenting on the topic. Michael Ning is requesting I talk about starting businesses. Okay, definitely I'll be doing that. I'll, it's one of my favorite topics, so I'll I'll, I'll do it at some point. Well, okay, Ajay, again, this is a really nice comment. Whenever I do fasting, I don't know why I don't feel hungry. In my mind, I keep chanting the name of God. I think it gives energy to stay energetic the whole day. Right, and this is what you find that in most fasting traditions, that the fasting was for a spiritual or religious purpose. Of course, also health benefits, many benefits to fasting uh, from the basic health and material level emotional benefits, mental benefits. My mind is always very clear when I'm fasting. I can think very clear, very sharp, right? Um, and then spiritual, you know, at the highest level, praying, meditating, chanting. Prayer, I mean, um, fasting makes all of these more powerful. And it makes you healthier, <laughs> okay? So if you just feast and eat a lot of food, right? Again, in America, what happens is people eat a huge amount of food and a lot of times they get sick. They get they gain weight. They gain weight at the end of the year. In December they gain weight, and then January they they have a resolution. Oh, I have to lose weight now, right? It's ridiculous. Um, so they gain a lot of weight because they only eat. They don't fast at all before, um, and they eat a lot of garbage. They eat a lot of bad food now, uh, like unhealthy food, super high calorie food. But if you fast before Christmas, imagine if you fast six weeks before Christmas, you're going to probably lose weight. You're going to be healthier. And then you feast for maybe you eat a lot of food for a week or something. Well, it's no big deal. You're not overall, you're probably not going to gain weight. You're not going to get sick because you've you've been very balanced. The fasting is going to make you actually healthier and better, stronger. So eating a few big meals with your family, no problem. The problem is now everybody, they only eat a lot. They just eat and eat and eat and there's never a fast. So it's unbalanced. They gain weight. They get sick. It's very common. People get sick in, in January. They, they say it's the flu season. I don't think it's, I think it's bullshit. I think it's just people are, they, they're eating garbage for all of December and so they get sick. Their body gets weaker. Ms. Nichols asking, did we speak about Russian traditions? We talked, we've talked about some Orthodox traditions. Christian, yes. I, I, I guess some of them are Russians too. Ah, Vuf Zero says, if someone's interested in Viking traditions, I am. I, one branch of my family is Danish. 
So I'm quite interested in that. Check out the channel Bjorn Andreas Bull Hansen. Well, I will check that out. I'm going to type it in. I'm guessing you it's YouTube since you said channel. Bull Andreas. There he is. Oh, this looks kind of cool. I'll check it out. Kind of old Viking traditions. I like it. You should interview that guy. I, I'll watch his videos and maybe I'll interview him. It looks kind of cool. Ramesh Kumar says, I'm fasting today because I'm at my business. Very nice. Like the snake diet. Yes. Snake diet is very modern. It's not, it's not based on tradition, but I love it. <laughs> Michael Ning, I have to disagree about the Yankees. I'm not a Yankees fan. But otherwise, yes. Good. <laughs> I'll definitely talk about the topic. Uh, Vladislav says, it's better to fast before the new year than to wait for the new year and promise yourself you'll lose weight. Better to come to the new year, you've already lost weight. Exactly, right? You fast before, you probably, you lose weight. <laughs> then maybe you eat a lot, you know, on Christmas Day or something or a few days. But then overall, you start the new year probably less fat than the begin than when you than you know than the old year. You're actually starting strong. So instead, people like in America, they just they eat, eat, eat. They get fat, and then they say, "Oh no, I have to lose weight." Oh, no. it's hard. It's kind of hard to lose weight in the winter. Not really the best time. I never do fasting because I think I can't do without water. Says Axmed. Maybe I'll try night in the future. Just do a water fast. You you can do a water fast. Drink water. It's okay. Just don't eat food. You know that there's dry fasting. Dry fasting is when you don't drink. Also, it's definitely more difficult. But if you water fasting has a lot, a lot, a lot of benefits. Also, so drink water. Add some salt to the water, and some uh, potassium. Uh, it makes it easier. So zero calorie still. Right, just electrolytes. So uh, drink a little salt, potassium water. Don't eat any food, nothing else, nothing else. Just that. And you can fast. It's easy. It's, you know, then you can fast. No problem. Drink as much as you want. And, uh, you know, check out the Snake Diet channel on BitChute. Uh, and you can learn more details. There's lots of ways to do it. But yeah, it's okay. Dry fasting is hard, it's much harder. Oh, Michael says his uncle's a teacher, English teacher in Cuba for, for 25 years. Nice. Let's go Yankees. <laughs> Yankees are a baseball team from New York City. A quite famous one. Probably the most famous baseball team in America, for sure. With the most money. Oh, a couple more. We're talking about fasting a lot, which is it's a great tradition. Fast, Lisa says, fasting is actually a cleansing cure, a very powerful one. But in this case, not only the body, but also the spirit and soul must be cleansed by prayer and meditation. I agree. When you combine, when you fast your body, you don't eat. If you also pray and meditate, or pray or meditate, either one, then you will find that it is uh, even more powerful, even more powerful. Uh, but fasting will clean your body. It, will, it can cure a lot of problems and diseases and serious health problems. If you do enough fasting, you can often cure them without doctors, without medicine, without all that stuff. Uh, not always, but, but many times you can. I recommend try fasting first. It's very powerful. Ah, holy in India. That's what I was I was trying to remember. The, yes, thank you. Uh, I'll end with this one. Sachidanad Singh says, we have holy in India, H-O-L-I, the festival of color. Yes, super famous one. That's really very uh, amazing uh, tradition in India, the holy festival. Uh, it's, um, you know, you, maybe you've seen, you've heard of it, but, you know, they kind of throw colored powder at each other and and I, I i know there are deeper meanings to all of this but uh yeah it's amazing colorful really power cool festival in um thailand they have uh 
Ah, oh, what's it called? I forgot the name. They have something similar in Thailand. It's the it celebrates the begin uh, kind of the 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 hot season. It's super 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 hot, and so the Thais um, they well the modern version they throw. It's like a huge water fight. They throw water at each other and uh, they put this white paste on your face and they go crazy. Um, more traditionally, they the young people would wash the feet of their uh, older relatives. So like the grandchildren would wash their grandparents' feet with water and their parents. Right? The younger people would wash the older people's feet as a sign of respect, uh, which... That's the more kind of calm, traditional <laughs> way uh, version. And then there's also kind of a very crazy, fun version of where they just have a big party in the street, like a big water fight. They drive, people drive around in trucks with water guns and shoot everyone that's walking by. Uh, if you, I, I've been there in, in, during the time and it's, it's really amazing. Um, I can't believe I can't remember the name. What's wrong with me? Let me look it up really quickly. Thai Water Festival. Songkran. Yeah, duh. Songkran. Jeez. Songkran, it's called. Songkran. Uh, it's a really fun time to visit Thailand. Uh, don't visit Bangkok during Songkran if you want to be dry because they will attack you with water um, even if you're in a suit. <laughs> So don't do it. <laughs> but it's dress casually and uh, have fun. Songkran. Yes. Thank you. Salal. Thank you. Songkran. Songkran. And they have uh, uh, also in Thailand a very nice one called Loi Kratong. Loi Loi Kratong. Loi Loi Kratong. And Loi Kratong is uh, where uh, it's also very nice. It's, kind of, it's something that couples will do together where they will take, they make these little boats. This little from leaves, like banana leaves, and they have a candle in the center, and they they take them to a river or a lake, and they float them at night, and so the the whole river is kind of full of these little candles floating. It's really beautiful, very nice. That's called Loi Kratong. All right, guys, I think that's all for now. So, old traditions, old traditions. Look to the past, uh, starting with your own family, your own culture your own religion and bring them back alive the many many beautiful traditions let's bring them back alive and you can even borrow from others if you like right because as we've discussed we've lost many of these old traditions because of the modern media and that's a that's a tragedy but we're not going to cry about it let's just let's bring them back bring them back bring them back alive in your own family all right Lots of love to you all. As always, go to EffortlessEnglishClub.com and join my VIP program. See you over on Gab. Talk to you later. Bye.